that dude did something for me, bro. That I get emotional talking about it, bro. Like I really needed it at the time. Be careful when you hear something that's laid out to be the truth. Steve Harvey seems to have answered Cat Williams' accusations by giving what looks like a bunch of threats to the comedian. But it looks like Cat has gotten support from some famous people, like Lil Boozy, who is ready to stand up for him no matter what. So what's really happening? The main thing about Harvey's reply was a smart defense against the things Cat Williams said. Harvey warned people not to get fooled by fancy talking, saying that just because someone talks well doesn't mean they're lying. Be careful when you hear something that's laid out to be the truth. There are some people who know how to lie so well. They know how to sprinkle in just enough truth and wrap it inside their lies. Steve Harvey then talked about being good, saying you can't be good and negative at the same time. You can't be righteous and negative at the same time. If you are a righteous man, you will speak as a righteous person. He finished by saying, when you hear someone trying to make you think they're against bad stuff or anything like that, be really careful. God's voice doesn't have sin in it. If you're talking for God, you won't do bad things, period. Now, lots of people think Harvey was making fun of Cat Williams, who just said he's really close to God. Most this is gonna sound really, really weird, but um, I believed at that young age that you could have a relationship with God. He added, I know it's kind of old fashioned, but when I was young, that's what I believed. I grew this relationship where we talk a lot every day about everything. When I ask for something, I know when you gave me what I asked for. So I knew from a young age that I was different, that I was lucky, and that I could make things happen if I found the instructions and followed them. After Cat Williams' interview, many people defended and showed his real personality. For example, the tough rapper Boozy almost cried when he remembered how Cat Williams gave him a lot of money right after he got out of prison and really needed help. Bo did something for me, brother. I get emotional talking about it, bro. Like, I really needed it at the time. Uzi said, I really needed the money then, and I didn't even have a place to stay. I was living in a hotel in downtown New Orleans with my kids. I didn't have my own place yet. Like, I really needed it at the time. Lots of fans who really liked Cat Williams for his honest talk on Clubhouse started liking him even more after hearing what Lil Boozy said about him. Now, it's not just Lil Boozy. Bernie Mac's daughter also said good things about Cat being a great friend to her dad who passed away. Cat Williams had has my utmost appreciation and respect for giving my dad his props and his flowers. And I felt like it was genuine. When talking about Cat Williams's recent interview with Shannon Sharp, where he said Steve Harvey didn't like the late comedian Bernie Mac, Janice McCullough said Cat seemed like a really good guy. She said, remember my dad has been gone for 15 years and I haven't been really involved in the comedy world. I've never met Cat Williams. He's one person I didn't get to meet when my dad was alive. But from what my dad said, he always seemed like a good guy, so I have no problems with him. But Steve Harvey, on the other hand, has been doing the opposite of what Cat does, like stepping on other comedians and being mean to his workers. She mentioned that the first person Steve Harvey is said to have treated badly was Bernie Mac. To explain, Steve Harvey and his three friends became really famous in comedy about 20 years ago, with their comedy tour called The Original Kings of Comedy. This show did really well in ticket sales and helped shape what comedy shows are like now. The most successful comedy tour ever at that point? Yes, it was at that point. The other three comedians were D.L. Hughley, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac. They all had different styles and talked about life as African Americans in America and the differences between black and white people. Steve was hot. We had the Steve Harvey show, so we had a national show. Bernie Mac was the hit comedian at the time. And, and then D.L. was hot. He had a TV show. At that time, Harvey was known to be the smoothest of the group, which helped him move to TV shows easily. But he was also known for being tough on the audience, making jokes jokes about people's hair, clothes, and jobs. Bernie Mac was different. He had a tougher style. Bernie Mac's comedy sometimes went beyond just making people laugh and talked about real life struggles. First year we did it, it was just me, Bernie, and uh, just me, Bernie, and Steve. Right and Steve closed. Steve Harvey might have been jealous of Bernie Mac's style, and that little problem turned into a big argument that lasted a long time. That's what one of the band members just told everyone, and now the internet is all talking about it. Bernie, uh, you know, felt like he didn't want to do it anymore. He was on his own path, and Steve, so 
you know, nothing like that ever happens. For a long time, there were stories that during the original Kings of Comedy tour, there was some bad blood between Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac. Now, other members like Cedric the Entertainer are talking about it. Cedric, who was on the tour with D.L. Hewley, Steve Harvey, and Bernie Mac, said that the two comedians didn't really agree on things. Cedric said, yeah, they were both strong personalities and they saw things differently, but in the end, they managed to work through it. Is that one of the reasons why you didn't do you did it you did the first you did the first part I, the second part? I, I don't think I think you know, of course like that was you know definitely a contributing circumstance. But there's more to their argument. In 2003, Bernie Mac said in a GQ magazine interview that Harvey was jealous of him and tried to mess up his chances for movie roles. Harvey talked about what Mac said in a 2010 interview and mentioned he was upset by it. Other people like Damon Williams also said what Mac said was true. While Harvey might not have been successful in trying to to overshadow Mac, it looks like he might have done that to Mark Curry. Mark Curry accused Steve of taking his career during a show on Fox Soul's The Mikey and Donnie Show. Curry, known for his role in Hangin' with Mr. Cooper, said he had a problem with Harvey over this. Mark Curry told TMZ in a new video that Harvey, who hosted NBC's Little Big Shots, took his jokes not just once, but twice. He told TMZ's staff that he talked to Harvey about it before, but Harvey kept using his jokes. The 58-year-old comedian said Harvey used his jokes on both The Steve Show and Kids Say the Darndest Things. Curry told TMZ, you're taking money from me. You've made it big. You have a lot of money. Stop using my jokes. I met him and went up to talk to him. I said, hey, you're using my jokes and taking money from me. You've made a lot of money. You're rich. You don't need to take from me. But then he used it again on his kids show. So obviously Mark wasn't happy that the comedian was using his jokes. Steve Harvey, stop using my material. Just call me and I'll tell you how to use it, he said, looking really angry at the camera. If you're going to take someone's jokes, at least do it right. Mark also said he's planning to do his own comedy show soon. Steve Harvey's known for for being a good guy who doesn't do wrong, so he didn't like what Mark said. Steve completely denied stealing jokes and said Mark couldn't even say which joke was supposedly taken. I'm tired of this. Mark Curry needs to grow up, Steve said. I haven't been on stage since 2015. Ask Mark Curry what joke he's talking about. When the interviewer mentioned Mark saying the joke was used on Little Big Shots, Steve said, really? This is crazy? It seems like Steve was really upset with Curry. Get a life, get a career. I've never stolen a joke in 35 Five years, he added. Steve also said, ask Mark Curry what joke he's talking about. He needs to grow up. Not only did Steve say Mark was wrong, but he also said Mark was making things up. Besides this, there are rumors that Steve doesn't treat his staff well. When his talk show moved to Los Angeles, Harvey reportedly sent a strict memo to his new staff with rules like not coming to his dressing room without an invitation. Don't open my door. If you do, expect to be removed, he wrote. He said his security will stop any anyone trying to see or talk to him. He wanted to stop people from just showing up. This was to change the easygoing policy he had in Chicago. He talked about this leaked letter with Entertainment Tonight. I'm in my makeup chair. They walk in. I'm having lunch. They walk in without knocking. I was walking in the hallway and people kept coming up to me asking for autographs and to do things for them because their friends came to the show. I just thought, wait a minute. Looking back, I probably should have dealt with it differently, but that's not everything. In November 2015, the guy who wrote Think Like a Man was sued. The lawsuit was because he supposedly backed out of renting a private jet while it was being upgraded, which cost more than $400,000. He had apparently asked for special things on the plane, like custom carpet, changing the inside from 16 seats to 14, special seat designs, and new walls inside the cabin. TMZ reported that Harvey settled this lawsuit, but about a year later, he sued the Federal Aviation Title Company to get back the $250,000 he had paid to rent the jet. He won that money by default because the company didn't answer his lawsuit. With all these accusations against him, people are starting to think that Stevie Harvey might not be the person they thought he was. 